And joining us now is Rabbi David Seth Kirshner of the Temple Emmanuel in Bergen County, New Jersey, Imam Omer Bajwa, chaplain at Yale University, and Pastor Raymond Muniz from Christ Community Church, also in New Jersey. Thank you so much, gentlemen, for being with me tonight. Imam Bajwa, I'd like to begin with you. you. You are, as we said in the open, all of you are facing new challenges. Your mm -hmm. congregants are facing anxieties in, a, in the manner in which they, they never have. How are you reaching your community, Imam, and what has been your message? Well, thank you for inviting us all tonight. Uh, I would say two things. One is that uh, we've moved everything online. So we have uh, all our teachings, all our sermons, our community classes have all been moved to Zoom. Um, and that's just the nature of, I think, so many of our religious communities across the board have moved online and uh, doing things virtually. Second is that, uh, you know, colleagues are going to share. So much of this is about uh, pastoral care and, and spiritual mentorship and, you know, sort of virtual community building, right? Making ourselves as available as we can to the community, but knowing that what we as religious leaders bring is, is physical presence and spiritual presence, but we need to sort of reimagine what that looks like now. Rabbi, I'm wondering how you've dealt with your congregants uh, who may have had relatives, friends, family who've passed away or become sick from this virus, how you've had to deal with that. Uh, that's been the most excruciating part of what we're doing right now, Scott, um, to see congregants who are in pain that you can't hug, you can't hold them. I've officiated at too many COVID funerals already, and to be limited to one or two family members has been incredibly painful. The converse of that is we've been able to Zoom the service. So we've had 100 households join us at the cemetery or for the memorial shiva, which has really buoyed the spirits of those who are grieving. Um, but it has been very challenging. I've also, like the imam, been working every day through text and phone calls, calling all of those who are hospitalized. We can't visit them personally, but being in touch with them makes a big difference. Pastor Muniz, I, I turn to you. I'm wondering how you've had to change, perhaps, your, your message to your congregants in in what is a time of, of obvious despair, but yet this is, for your community, the holiest week of the year. It, it is, and uh, crises are, are not, uh, you know, new to us. Uh, people of faith have had to face crisis uh, from generation after generation, so this is just another uh, face in our, uh, in our struggle, in our faith, in our walk. And uh, I would say that for me, uh, it has changed. Our, our church has evolved. We, we used to be a church that would uh, be encouraging people to come to the church, and we would do everything possible to attract the people. That's no longer uh, accessible. Now we need to make ourselves available. And so what I do is I'm available and I'm accessible 24 by 7. My members are calling. They're asking for prayer. They're asking for encouragement. And so every day I wake up early, I'm praying for them. I'm thinking of them. But then I am going into my office and I am preparing everything I can to encourage them about what God has done in past time, what he's doing today, and what he continue to do in future times. So this is a time to, uh, to be strong and to be courageous and to stand up and, uh, and be a people of, uh, of faith and trust God, and he will get us through this. We've seen this in 1918. We've seen this in the crash. We've seen this now in this horrific event. But we will get through this, and what we need to do is stand fast. Imam, what has your message been? Uh, very much uh, to what my colleagues have said, very much that God is merciful and God is in control. Uh, this is a test. This is a tribulation that the world is going through. And and uh, and we'll see who, the, those people and those communities that rise to the occasion and uh, offer their services of uh, assuaging the, the anxiety and the fear that the world is going through and that are serving uh, human beings. And we have extraordinary healthcare workers and professionals and so many people, essential workers on the front lines. Uh, and it's really about bringing humanity together uh, to deal with the challenge. This is Rabbi by difficult to have people focus uh, so much on, on goodness and kindness when there is so much despair and, and anxiety, isn't it? It is, but if you put it in perspective, you can realize how blessed we are. Uh, you know, if only I were afforded shelter, I would say, as we say in appropriate time for Passover tomorrow night, Dayenu, it would be enough. But I live in a house with shelter. I'm surrounded with my family. We have our health. I have running water, electricity, internet, cable. These are things that too often we take for granted. And there are many, many blessings that surround us. I've been trying very hard to orient 
and make a posture of seeing those blessings, not only for me, but for my congregants, because I think that's an important perspective to have during this very challenging time. Pastor Muniz, I'm wondering, have you, have you been able to visualize what the other side of this crisis looks like? And how do you speak to your congregants about that? Well, you know, there's two sides, as you said. There's the people that believe in God, and those of us, we have a strong faith. We can rely on that. The ones that uh, do not have a faith in God, uh, do not exercise a faith, this is a time of soul-searching. You know, if this is, in fact, the world that we live in, is this all there is? Because we believe that there is an afterlife, and for us, the afterlife is eternal. This is temporal. So, you know, our focus is to be compassionate, to be loving, and to be caring and reaching out. And so faith ha plays an important role in people's lives. And if they don't have faith, they're going to rely on medicine, on government, on science. But we rely on God, and our God is able to conquer all things. With, with him, there's nothing impossible. So, you know, I have three sons, and they work in the hospitals. I have a daughter-in-law that works in the hospital. I have another daughter-in-law that's just about ready to become a nurse. So I'm, I'm consumed and concerned about them. But one thing I do is I release them every single day into our God, and I trust God to see them through. When they come home, I thank God for having them come home safely. And to me, that's my biggest encouragement, and, and that is that, you know, seek God while he may be found, and he will, he will provide all of our needs, and he will give us the strength to get through this. And again, we will get through this. Imam, are, are you able to think about whether it's a month from now, two months, three months, whatever, when you will be able to be back in front of your community? I mean, I'm excited to think about what, you know, when, that, when those days will come. Uh, it, it, we're in the thick of it right now, uh, and so it's challenging, but we definitely uh, want to give people hope. And I really appreciate my colleague's message of uh, th what we call the Ministry of Perspective and also encouraging people to develop resilience. Uh, and that resilience is what it's going to take us to the, other, to the other side of this. Rabbi, what will your own message be tomorrow night at your own Seder table? My, my message of hope for what will look like on the other side of this is that this is a moment that is defibrillating our country, our world. And frankly, we needed it. We were out of rhythm. We weren't able to see people because of their political stripe or religious affiliation mm -hmm. or who they were or who they supported. This is a moment that has got us shocked back into a shared rhythm of unity. And that is what we're going to capitalize on. And we're going to make it last much longer than just the few minutes until we find a sense of normalcy. That's going to be religious leaders' challenge. That's going to be our congregational challenge. And that's what the hope of this moment will be, of where we come together unified through this challenge that we're going through as a people. Imam, you spend so much of your time hearing about the fears of others. Who do you turn to to talk about your own fears in this uncertain time? Uh, I appreciate the question. The, you know, I'm a chaplain, uh, and they say every chaplain needs a chaplain. And so I have an amazing supervisor, uh, uh, Chaplain Sharon Kugler, who's university chaplain at Yale. And then I have my own spiritual director, uh, who's a s senior imam, who I turn to uh, for my own religious guidance and uh, pastoral care. And Pastor, I posed that same question to you lastly. You know, I have a wonderful family. Uh, our church is truly a family. And so every single person cares for me just like I care for them. I've had members drop by my house, leave food in the back of the house, and just, you know, wave at me. I've had people call me. Uh, I had one gentleman call me this morning, and he wanted to encourage me. And so, you know, it's a reciprocal thing. This is not just us giving, but us also being able to receive. And I am blessed to have a wonderful wife and family that share my faith, and then an extended family that goes beyond what anyone can imagine. Rabbi, I see you shaking your head. Look, it's a very hard job as the nurturers to remember to put our own oxygen masks on, too. Um, I, like the pastor and the imam, I have some incredible colleagues. I have an amazing supportive wife and two amazing children, and they've all been um, a great source of help. And, and like the pastor said beautifully, my congregation has nourished me, and I hope I can only give them a fraction of what they have nourished um, back to them. It's great having all of you here. Uh, Pastor Ruiz, uh, really, your, your kids who are at uh, Inglewood Hospital uh, on the front lines of this, we wish them well, and we're grateful for all that they're doing. We're grateful for all that all of you are doing this holiday season. We'll talk to you again soon. Stay Thank safe, you. Scott.